everyone. Um, good morning. Okay, so I'm new to this whole videoing, so if, if you'll excuse my uh, my filming, I will try my best to make this as clear as possible. Okay, so I have my materials out. Um, I have my paper stumps, some paint brushes. We'll see if we need those. Um, I've got my sharpener, eraser. I can't find my gummy eraser, but you guys will need your gummy eraser. I've got some sandpaper. Um, I have my white charcoal. Probably won't need that. Um, I have my dark charcoal pencil, compressed charcoal pencil, another blending stump, um, compressed charcoal, and uh, vine charcoal. So I'm going to kind of mix the two together and we'll see what happens and my pencils so I have my full set of pencils um I also uploaded some draw uh, some photographs some black and white photographs of nature scenes of landscapes for you so I just printed a few of them to um, kind of show you different examples of um, that's my bad printer you can see right here these sm smudges but if you can print it, it will be nice just to have uh, for placement of where things belong. Okay, um, so I have these three that I printed out because they had some good textures of trees and foliage. We have some grass, right? And so I kind of wanted to show you water, how demonstrate how to do those different things. So um, I'm just going to... First start out, I have my loose leaf B paper, a ruler, and I have some uh, note paper. And I also have on the side my sketchbook so that I can kind of play around in a calculator. Okay, so when I look at this right here, I am going to measure the drawing that I picked. So you'll pick one, you will pick one of these photographs to work from. And so I took my measurement across it was 9.75 inches. The image itself, not the paper, but the image came to 9.75. And then when I took measurement of the height, it came to 6.5. So what I did here, as you can see, is I put the height over the width. And then I went over to my B paper and I thought, how wide do I want my drawing to be here? So, I wanted to come in from the edges about an inch so that I'll have a border. And what you can do is you can tape this paper onto your masonite and you can tape your border and just put a, slight, a strip of tape here. Remember, if your tape is really sticky, to put it on your pants first or on some fabric so that it kind of loses some sticky before you put it on your paper. So you will have it on the borders. So um, that way you don't rip your paper whenever you're done with your drawing. Because you will probably make a lovely drawing and you'll want to keep it. And so you don't want to rip it up. All right. So you'll have your tape on your border, which will also make the surface of the paper space or your picture plane a little smaller to work with. So anyways, so I decided that I wanted it to be about 22 across. So 22 across is to about here. So you can see I have a little bit of a margin there and here. So I try to just kind of like move my ruler so that I have kind of equal margins on the side. But what I really am focusing on is how wide. So if the width of the picture, right, this, this is 9.75 and I want it to be 22 on here, what I did is, and then the, this part is 6.5, so I put that as equals to this. So I took 22 inches by 6.5 inches equals 143. Then, after taking that and multiplying it times each other at 143, I divided it by 9.75, which is right this this angle so 143 divided by 975 equals 14.66666 6, 6, 6, 6. 
six, 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 and it went on and on and on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say about 14 and a half. All right, so this right here, oops, is my final ratio. Because what we're trying to do is some nice books over here. These were at the library, although unfortunately the library's closed, so otherwise I would. Okay, so I've got my ratio of that, and now due to that, I could figure out with that math equation how to do my ratio here. So it's gonna be 14 and a half tall by 22 inches wide. All right, and that's how I'm gonna start that. So, all right, so what I did was I measured the edges and here's my last one. I'm going to, because I wanted to have the correct ratio with my photograph that I chose. All right, so kind of have a really nice soft line right there. Here you can see that I have started taping this off so that my edges stay kind of clean and I have a nice border and I know how to stick to those specific ratios so that will be easier for me to transfer my drawing uh, from the photograph, right? So for demonstration purposes, I'm probably gonna not just be drawing this one on here, but I'm also gonna be drawing bits and pieces of some of the other ones um, as well, because you know each one individually has some parts to it that I wanted to kind of demonstrate for you. Um, that's why I have the few three. So this is gonna be my regular kind of just demo space, but I wanted to show you how to get your correct ratio so that you could transfer your drawing to, you know, scale it up onto here, but, but having the proper scale. Um, okay. I took my photograph and then I marked the midway point, the, ha the halfway point. And so I kind of took it and I separated it into quarters. So horizontally, I put a halfway point, a quarter point, just to kind of help me so it's like a slight grid. I also did that on my paper as well. I marked like a little halfway um, point kind of on the tape area and just up into my drawing, just a tiny bit. So here's where I, I made some of those little kind of quarter marks and halfway marks with my permanent marker all the way around. So I've got four spaces up and four spaces across. I did the same on my photograph. And so this, uh, in a sense, I'm doing a gridding and this gridding will help me to place everything. It'll just make it easier, but it's not gridded on the paper itself. It's just kind of around the corners. All right, now I put in some of these guidelines. So what I'm doing is I'm following my picture and remember, you're gonna use your pencil as an angle, right? So that you can get those angles right. And I'm making sure, usually when we're looking at something out, we keep it perpendicular. Now my painting or my photograph that I'm working from is at this angle. So I'm gonna match that angle because my drawing is also at the same angle. And this will help me to keep them the same, all right? So I'm matching my pencil up to that. So it's not necessarily like this now. It's matching up there and then it just comes right on over. You can see my guidelines. I've lightly sketched them out with an HB pencil, right? So I have the mountain range. Using my guidelines, my quarter guidelines, I know that, okay, that peak is over to the left of that quarter. I'm also looking at the guidelines to the left that to know how high I need to make that, right? So I'm looking this this uh, vertical line axis with my guide and also my horizontal guide for my axis in order to know how high and how far these come out, right? And so 
this right here is that tree. It's the shape of this tree. So I'm just kind of creating guidelines with the shape, right? Nothing uh, with too much detail, just kind of this right here. I've got this laid in, right? Kind of this snow. And I could tighten that up later. Here's the snow, here's the ridge line, all right? So you can kind of see how I'm working just by mapping it out, getting all the locations with my HB as we have been doing up to this point. Okay, so let's just say we have everything mapped out. What next? How do we approach this next? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our photograph and we're gonna take a look at the values. So if you notice that this area is kind of like a mid to dark gray. We have a very nice light gray right here. The sky is even lighter still. Almost the same, almost the same though, this gray and this one. Okay, um, so we're kind of taking a look. These are very, very dark. The light is kind of hitting them, but the green of these are really dark. So this is again about layering. So we might approach laying in this lake first the value of this lake or the value of this hill right here. Um, looking at kind of the lightest part of it, so we have the highlights of the trees, we can start to get that high, that light in first. That The lightest part of the trees is a light gray. So we might start with our vine charcoal and just laying that in, all right? Um, so talking about layering different kind of mediums and stuff, one thing to know is we're gonna work with, we're gonna mix pencil and we're gonna mix a little bit of charcoal, okay? Um, you start out with your pencils getting that mapped out area. But there's a couple things to know is that if you take your 2B pencil and you get it really dark, right? And you really lay in that lead or that graphite, I don't know if you can see that sheen Okay, so I use my 2B pencil to get a dark value. Once I do that with my pencil, I can't layer over that with any kind of charcoal. Okay, I can put that over it. Um, I could put my compressed charcoal over it, but it's not going to stick. It'll just come right off. Okay, so that's something important to know is how you layer these. Now, that's using the graphite pencil, but what I can do is I can, so I'm gonna also take a look at my angle. You know how these kind of curve? Some of them curve like that, the vine charcoal. I'm gonna pick that curve and lay it that way. Instead of having it like this, so you get those lines, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the rounded arch. And I'm gonna start kind of laying this in that hillside. I'm gonna work in these kind of circular movements. Just getting a nice value in there. Now it's, it's gonna need to be darker, right? This is not the darkest that it's gonna be. But we are gonna start by working our lights in the image and then moving darker, okay? Also, there's gonna be trees that are coming on top of that hill. All right, there's a tree right here that's coming up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get that back on first and then I can lay this tree in afterwards. Instead of, let's say, drawing this tree first and then trying to work around all that shrubbery, that's gonna take a lot of extra time and be hard. So we can think of it in kind of like a painting manner. Um, we're gonna layer everything. So, you know, while you're layering, if I put this way too dark, it's gonna be hard to pull out the highlights of this tree. So just keeping that in mind, we wanna make sure that at all times, I can erase to pull out highlights if I need to, and you probably will. So that's why I'm laying this in kind of light to start out. And then I have paper towel. So I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna kind of rub that in, kind of like we've done in class before when we put an overall tone. Okay, that's not dark enough for me, so I'm gonna take my vine charcoal again. 
So see that line right there? That's because I didn't have it at the right angle. So I want to make sure. So maybe this time I'm going to go in circles kind of this way. A little bit. So kind of layering one direction over another should get me a nice, a nice coverage. So we start out pretty loose, right? Just like we normally do. We don't start with details immediately. We want to kind of lay in these overall patchwork of values and get that kind of mapped out too. So we mapped out our lines of where things were located to help guide us. And now what we're doing is we're laying in values, overall values. Okay, so now we have these interesting little um, marks for the trees. These are all these conifers. So there's this kind of little V shape of shadow in between them. All right, so you don't need to get every single tree. There's thousands of trees on this hill. What we need to do is get the essence, the feeling for the tree, the texture of this forest. And that will feel real to us as the viewer looking at the image. So it doesn't have to be exact. What you want is that feeling of that. You don't want a feeling of a grouping of trees or a forest of trees that are not coniferous, that are deciduous, let's say, and lose their leaves because those have a rounded canopy, a totally different feeling. They're, they're softer, fluffier, you know, feeling at some of them. These are sharp and pointy and that's what we want. We want to get that kind of feeling. So what I might do is I could take my pencil out this time and I could roughly kind of draw in some of the shapes of these trees, right? Hundreds of these little trees, right? So we're kind of getting these ones that are kind of closer, right? Um, and I might uh, kind of just make these kind of uneven little lines for the rest. The top of this area has, and I'll show you a close up of that. There you see kind of that rough outline of what I'm talking about. Oops, my hand. Okay, so I have these, these trees are a little closer. And then what I did for these back ones is I kind of made this irregular, right? Because they're not all in a row. And then on the very edge here, even smaller because they're further away, right? So these are closer and these are further. So make sure you guys check out that PowerPoint before and so you understand kind of what I'm talking about and that idea of depth. So I made this ridge line to have just these little bitty kind of shapes of those trees, right? Just a little bit, um, the points, right? You cannot see each tree individually. You just see this conglomeration of them all together. And then here at the end, so he's starting to get these shapes on the trees on the shoreline here. All right, and so what I may do is, as I'm getting more in there, is start to shade, right? Pulling out those trees, you can start to see them, and then I'm, and I'm kind of fading off. and then putting in a little bit of those shapes. All right. And you can start to see them emerging. All right, you can start to see, and I'm just kind of being loose with those textures. Remember, textures move all the way to the edge. They don't stop just within and then, right? So they continue on. So I'm looking at. And so you can start to see it starting to happen here. All right. So that's how I'm going to keep going about that. And then I'm going to look and see, you know, okay, it gets a little lighter right here. So, right, I have these kind of dark. So I'm going to need to make this whole area a little bit darker, right? So I'm just kind of leaving this now 
and it's just kind of like letting myself know it's a placeholder before I and then I'm gonna start moving on because I don't want what I really don't want to do is I don't want to just work this area because if I get all this detail and I really get into this area for an hour or so and then I start moving up other places and realize oh now I need to make this darker so I'm gonna have to go over it with another layer of my vine charcoal right and then smear that in oh I've just smeared all the work I did right so I'm just kind of got that there for now I'm gonna move over here I'm gonna start working all these other areas mapping out these large quantities and spaces of value all right all right so I'm gonna start laying in this value of this reflection of the forest this hill into the water so this is a pretty glassy um, calm uh, water situation over there you can tell it's not a windy day um, and you can see that the water reflections of the snow up here are kind of smeared right so we just pick values right here lay those in and I'm gonna use my paper stump and kind of smear them in the direction that I see the water if it was really wavy then I would do it however that is but I can see that it looks very smeared right and so I'm doing that here on my drawing all right and so I kind of laid this in with my vine charcoal and then I smeared it with a paper towel actually my finger right here and then on the edges kind of I'm gonna lay in with my pencil because I've got more ability for that detail so since it's calm, I can see that reflection pretty good. This is pretty near the hill, All right? But the reflection of the mountains right here is a little less clear. It's not as clear. So I'm going to take my paper stump and I'm going to kind of blend in. The little paper stump would be good for these, also these little bitty tree areas. All right, so it's all about that kind of layering, getting that... Right, so you can start to see that reflection happening and it really darkened up right here where the water met meets the land. There's that nice kind of uh, implied line, right? And you can kind of see that a little bit right here, not so dramatically, that little line. And so this area right here, you can kind of see how it's, so I've done that over here. What I did was I used my vine charcoal to kind of lay in those spaces. But then I took my 2B and I kind of went in and darkened certain areas kind of in there. And then I took my paper stump. So after using my pencil, where I kind of saw so, and then I'm dragging it to make it have that glassy appearance. Okay, so again, maybe not thinking exact, you know, looking more at the values and those changes um, and kind of distancing yourself from, from just what that is, that just looking at it as value changes, right? in that water all right and then uh last on here i might i might do these trees in the front so remember your eraser is your friend you can pull out certain areas with your eraser for example right here i might erase little areas in there to pull out some spaces that might reflect where the snow is in the mountain and then I might take my paper stump and kind of blend that back, the edges, because there's no sharp edges right here. So this is another thing I talked about in uh, my presentation is hard edges versus soft edges. So in the front, we have more defined edges because it's nearer to us and we can see things more clearly. As they recede in space, the edges become softer and more blended. All right. Um, Here's a different photo. This one has some grass in the front. So the way I might approach this is I can see that overall value of that is kind of dark and I see some highlights in there. 
So we've got these little light pieces of grass that are coming, threading through there. I might use my eraser to pull out those highlights. What I did was I just put, took my vine charcoal and made kind of a, an area there. And then I might start to kind of add those grasses in. Grass is affected by the wind. So you might, your picture might show some wind. Here we have the textures moving outwards. But grass is not just mechanical. It's not like this, right? It's like kind of like hair. When I showed you guys that uh, demo on the hair. So this area gets a little bit lighter. I might take, um, so this is my pink pearl eraser, but uh, better yet is your kind of that gummy eraser, but I cannot find mine. So anyway, so I'm kind of lightly erasing that because the value right here gets a little lighter. There's this little saddle of leaves or grass. Right, so I'm kind of laying that in. This area right here is actually much darker. So I might put my pencil on this, it's the side and get in that overall darker value and then start. The grass is kind of weeping downwards right here. eraser and pull out little sections, little highlighted areas. So your gummy eraser will be, your gummy eraser will be a lot better for that. Pulling out little sections. Here we have it. It's looking a little bit more finished. Um, it still needs some work, right? But you can see that again, those grasses are not mechanical. They have a life of their own. They blow in the wind. They flow with the wind. Um, you can see like the darker areas. You can see this right here is coming out and towards us a little bit and this is pushed back a little bit. So we're seeing the texture and the feel of that grass. Some of the pencil movements that I was using, if you want to look at just, I was kind of staying kind of loose. So in here, I was moving my pencil like this and right over here because I couldn't see lines of the grass. It just looked like it was kind of tangled up, right? So you don't have to, um, everyone hit, you know, being exact like that, right? I'm, I'm following the feeling of the grass. I'm, I'm going with a lot of that feeling. And it's gonna be the same with trees. So you have deciduous trees. So as you can see, I'm using my vine charcoal just to lay in some large spaces, all right? Of, of value okay I'm not really using it for any detail or anything like that um, so I might let's say we have you know a kind of fluffy like tree that's deciduous and loses this right okay so I just kind of laid that in uh, I might take my paper towel Get in the overall value and remember you know you have chunks so um, maybe this is a chunk right here we got a chunk right there right here. all right and so I'm gonna lay in those values again so maybe dark right there this there That's kind of how I'm approaching those. It's kind of loosely taking my paper stump, just laying in some values, you know, in the early stages, right? There might be like this negative space, like right in here, that I might decide to erase. And that's where I'll see some branches coming in. Maybe there's little 
bits of some branches that are coming there come out over here all right so I'd have all this base this uh, shape marked out right initially with the beginning but you can just kind of see the different textures and then later on I'm gonna get so again you can kind of see the feeling right of these edges of these leaves right are the leaves like this with the point are they more rounded so what is the shape of those leaves and kind of get that right if they were more rounded maybe it'd be like that right but they go in and out so just kind of getting that feeling right getting that overall texture in right and you can see that it's starting to get some form right where is your sun coming from where is the light source where are the shadows just like we do with any of our other still lifes so you can kind of just see it forming this is by no means finished this is just how you will start and as you you start to get your layers in then you'll start to get more of those details maybe you might put maybe you might see a couple of these leaves right all together but the leaf is just another form so on its side you might just see that much maybe there's right so you don't have you could just get little details in there but you want to get those values placed so that you get a proper feel for the dimension of that tree and you want that texture textures are so important in landscape drawings so also using eraser to pull out any areas where the there's highlights so i can make those same marks with oops with my eraser i can get those same marks going of little leaves being hit by the light in there as well so again using your eraser is also an important tool so this is a really nice book it's called a master class in drawing and painting landscape sea sky whatever town or countryside it had a few images that i liked and so i wanted to take uh just to kind of show you so here's some example of trees and so you can kind of just see like this is the loose first little draft and you can see the trees have different shapes so these are kind of when we talked about gestures these are kind of the feeling of that inner you know kind of feeling for the trees in their movement how they move this one's leaning just a tiny bit to the right look at that one the growth pattern of that so you're kind of getting that feeling uh let's see here what else do i have here's some more grass this is on sand so you can see kind of the waves of the sand that the wind made um, here's some other drawings of trees you see how loose that is but we get a feeling that's an old and gnarled tree right there's the picture the original picture so you can see those kind of loose gestural lines but the values are in so we have an idea of the shape and form of the tree the three-dimensional feeling of that tree so i just wanted to kind of move back into the trees a little bit over here um you can see i'm kind of working this a little bit more and kind of adding these edges kind of that texture in there right and you can see how loose my marks are and i'm just following the gestures of the trees themselves maybe kind of getting some more shadows in things like that deepening right some of those and then on the top they just kind of start to we've got these little bitty kind of areas so I might use different varieties of pencils to get different kind of darknesses right so keeping to the edges and everything like that. And you can start to see everything begin to emerge. So it's starting to look like a forest, right? You can see all those irregular lines and I'm just letting my hand be loose and gestural to capture that. So let's talk about clouds, shall we? Clouds are 
in this image, it's kind of light. Um, but clouds are more ephemeral, less defined, less of a structure than other things. And so again, I'm going to approach it the same way as I approached everything else. I'm going to start out with my barn charcoal and just kind of lay in some areas of darks and lights. Some clouds are more fluffy and they might have a little more form, right? So you might want to capture that where it's kind of almost like tree-like, right, of the foliage. So you might want to mark that down super light. This is a little dark, but I wanted you to be able to see it. Um, maybe using the side of the pencil instead of like that, the, the tip, right? And so I'm just kind of getting that in because those edges really do need to disappear. We don't want those there. We can use our smudge stick um, to work this little guy, our paper stump, to kind of loosen those edges, but they need to be light. All right, otherwise, um, you working with the side, right, again, laying that onto its side, getting some. I find that with the clouds, I prefer to use my finger and I can get like a really nice smudge that way. Uh, that's just me. You can use your own whatever you need to do. Uh, but certain areas between the clouds or within the clouds might be darker. Remember, don't be afraid to get those values in. Some skies are more stormy and they have like more intensity. So you want to get the characteristic of the clouds. Also, they blow in the wind too. So you can see in the image that they're kind of moving this way a little bit. It's like that wind might be coming off the tops of mountains and pushing those clouds over. Some of these mountains are covered by, and you can see that little shadow underneath, right, onto of the cloud onto the mountain. So clouds actually do, even though they're ephemeral and wispy and all that, they actually do create shadows if you've ever seen shadows on the ground of clouds moving across. So there is some shadow from those clouds. So also note that, and you can see the softness of the lines. So I might get my vine charcoal and darken in these areas right in here and kind of marking those. And then in here, so start with the light, right? Start with your lightest value and work darker, continually work darker. Make sure, don't stop short. You want to continue to get as dark as it is. So if it's black in certain areas, make sure you go all the way and you get the black. So here is a little more of my example. And there, and then within the cloud, there's a little bit of shadows. This is kind of between the clouds. This is kind of so you can see how I'm using that. And then so I'm kind of starting out with my vine charcoal and then I move into using my pencils to get in some more information. So that's kind of a good way you can overlap and the vine charcoal is great for creating large spaces of value. Um, you probably won't need to use your compressed charcoals be, unless you find spaces where you really need to darken. Um, but be careful when you put too much of that charcoal on the paper, you can't put the graphite of your pencil on top of it. So when you have these little super light layers, you can put the graphite on no problem. And vice versa. If you layer in a really thick area of your uh, graphite, it gets that sheen, that shininess, and you can't layer anything on top of it. It slides right off. Okay? Um, so be careful with your layering. But the vine charcoal will probably be your best friend. Um, with clouds, I also have Q-tips. Q-tips are a nice tool, and you can create a really nice softness. You can try your brushes and see if they have any effect. Um, and what they will with the vine charcoal... So the brushes will kind of move that vine charcoal around and create a really nice, soft um, feeling. So you can use your brushes for that, Q-tips in the clouds or anywhere else you may need. And then I'll just talk about rocks for a moment.
All right, so I'll just talk about rocks for a minute. Um, this is one of the photographs that I uploaded for you to use if you decide. Um, it's a very super rocky um, terrain and the rocks are going straight up and they're covered in foliage. You can see a lot of atmospheric depth here. Um, the mountains are receding into space. They're becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. And the ones in the very front have higher contrast between lights and darks. So they pop forward. You can also see more details in the ones that are closer as well. And as they move back, you can see less and less detail. That contrast is less and less, right? You have less lights and darks. It's more faded looking. And it's also softer looking. The edges become softer and less defined. So when drawing rocks, um, just think of them as you do with other things um, when you're looking at a still life. Just think if you're looking at uh, tubes or, um, you know, a glass, a cup, that kind of thing. They're going to have shape. They're going to have form to them as well. They'll have a highlighted side. They'll have a more shaded side, right? Um, Right? And so here I'm just using my pencil to darken in. They'll have areas that are in the shadow, right? That recede kind of further or just basically show the form, right? Um, the rocks are more structural. They look the opposite of clouds, right? Um, they have fissures, right? So you have little areas um, where you may have fissures and cracks, right? That are showing through in their they're kind of dark, but they're not all exactly the same. Some cracks are less. Remember those skull, the cracks in the skulls that we were doing? So just basically look at this as you look at other forms, right? Simplify the form, get the structure on the paper um, when you're starting, right? Mapping out these structures, um, the hills, the mountains, the valleys, where the trees are, right? Then start to get in your valleys, right? And then towards the end, that's when you're gonna start getting all of those textures in, right? And again, you wanna make sure because rocks have lots of texture, right? Is it a shiny rock? Is it a more of a matte rock that doesn't reflect as much light, right? So how do you see those highlights? How do you see those shadows, right? And so you're just kind of adding form. Again, here, if you want to use your vine charcoal, you're welcome to use the vine charcoal and then start getting in some of that as well. And another thing that I wanted to mention, this is a lot of graphite, a lot of, of stuff. If you have some hairspray, you can kind of spray that on there to fix things as you go um, in the layers. If the one layer is totally finished and you're going to start working on top of it, you're welcome to put some hairspray on there. Um, that's probably something that's easily accessible because a lot of stores are closed, but grocery stores have that if you want. Um, another thing to limit things smearing, right, is to put a piece of paper under your hands while you're working. So you want to have a little piece of paper under there. So as your palm is moving around or whatever, you're not smearing stuff on the paper. Um, and then you, because then it just all ends up looking muddy. All right. So um, that's kind of about landscape drawing. I hope that helped you. Make sure to email me uh, if you have any other questions and we can talk further. Also, there's the discussions on Canvas that you can um, ask questions that I'll be looking at as well. Thank you. See you guys.